in this video, I want to talk about tailgating. And the reason for this is because of a situation I just had with one of my clients. My client is using a left foot accelerator due to having a stroke. They can't use the right side of their body anymore. So they're using the left foot accelerator. So basically the accelerator is now the pedal on the left and the brake pedal is the pedal on the right. Now this person has had quite a few hours so they are getting used to the left foot accelerator, but they will still have what we call clutch reflex, which is when they basically push the left foot down like a clutch pedal, which basically means all the way down because of something that's panicked them. And it's the reason why, even though they're a qualified driver, I still display, display the L plates and why on the back of the car, as you can see, I have hand controls in use. I know this person's not using hand controls, but keep well back with the disabled badges, but they still tailgate. And in this video, you will see exactly the situation. Now, I would love for the person that was driving this vehicle to comment underneath. And I want to know why you thought this was a good idea, because it makes no sense to me. Now, if my client hammers the brake, there is nothing I can do from the passenger side, apart from say, off the brake, off the brake, off the brake, or try to push their leg. And the chances are that's not gonna do the job. Now, some of you may, may be saying, yeah, but you've got dual controls. Yeah, the dual control doesn't work like that. If my client doesn't use enough brake, I can use extra. If we think about it like this, if this is the brake that the client is using and this hand is my dual brake, if the client brakes a little bit, so imagine then everything moving this way is braking. If they use a little bit of brake and it's not enough, I can then override them and pull more brake. But if my client uses too much brake, I can't do anything. This is a cable between the passenger side and the driver side. It is not a rod. It is not a metal bar. I cannot override. I can't lift the brake. It doesn't do anything. It just makes the cable flex and the brake pedal on the driver's side doesn't do anything. So therefore the chances are we're gonna get crashed into. Now I've been teaching since 2006. So to this day, 16 years, um, or coming up to 16 years now. And I've been rear-ended 23 times. 23 times none of which is our fault i've had plenty of people try to blame us but the insurance have never said that it's a fault claim on our side the reason why is because the person that goes into the back is liable 100 percent. okay unless the person at the front has reversed into them it is liable or if they've deliberately slammed the brakes on they've not got brake lights all that jazz but we've got old plates for a reason there's nothing that we can do. Now, we also know, and everyone has taught this, that you should keep a two second distance between you and the vehicle in front in the dry, four seconds in the wet, and 10 at least in snow or ice. Now, let's go into a little bit of physics for the, some of you that have watched my videos before. I like to give you stats and basically physics because it makes it more logical and gives you a reason why you have to do certain things. Now, human reaction time to a visual stimulus is 0.25 of a second, a quarter of a second. To an audible stimulus is 0.17 of a second. And that's just the average person. Yes, some people are faster, some people are slower. Now, if we just put this into context, if my client hammers the brake really hard, that's basically for me to react on that visual stimulus. It takes me a quarter of a second. Then I have to say to the client, off the brake, off the brake, off the brake. By the time I've said that, that's taken half a second, whatever. So now we're at three quarters of a second. Then the client has to react, again, audible stimulus, so 0.17 of a second, that's just make it a bit easier, we'll say 0.2 of a second, so we're just over one second now. Then they've got to move their foot off of the brake or hand off the brake if they're using hand controls, another 0.1, 0.2 of a second. So now we're at point, uh, 1.2 seconds, roughly, from my car's point of view. Now the person that's following has a visual stimulus, 0.25 of a second. Now we're at one and a half seconds. See where the problem's coming now? Now they've got to go onto the brake, 0.1 of a second. Now we're at 1.6 seconds. Now if you're following my learner car closer than that two seconds, the chances are you have now hit us. 
You try doing it behind that car, you have definitely hit us because I can guarantee the brakes on that car are definitely going to be better than yours. I've got Brembo four pot um, calipers on this car and it's full of eight EBC um, race spec discs and pads. This car stops very, very quickly. So there's a reason why we have these L plates and yeah, things happen. Students make silly mistakes sometimes, but that's why we have the L plates. So from a driving instructor's point of view, we would massively appreciate it if you drop back. Now, if we look at this video of this driver that we had the problem with, you can see why this makes no sense to me. They've followed us, they're weaving in and out. Then when they finally do get the opportunity to overtake, they then overtake to go behind the vehicle that we followed the entire time to then turn immediately left. What is the point? But that being said, I would much rather if somebody is being impatient to overtake my client because they're out of our hair and I don't have to worry that if my student does anything weird that I'm now going to get rear-ended. So if you do see a learner car and you feel that you want to get on with your journey, overtake. Don't tailgate. Because the one thing I can guarantee will never ever happen is the driving instructor will say to the client, don't worry about the speed limit, speed up to keep them happy. It's never going to happen. Okay, We're not going to get points on the student's license and we're definitely not going to be preaching bad practice like that. So please keep your distance. Don't get stone chips on the front of your car. Don't get stone chips on your windscreen or possibly crack your windscreen and don't crash into the back of us. Keep your insurance off your back so you don't have to pay additional insurance for the next three to five years. I hope that video has helped. I'm sorry if it feels ranty, but this one today was just weird. It made no sense to me why they did what they did. And if you like to put a comment, share like crazy. That'd be massively appreciated because the more this word gets spread, the better. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.